Here we are again. Sorry for the long wait but after finishing the last university exams and graduating I can finally come back here on YouTube. And let's start talking about Bulgaria. Economics Channel. The Real Economics. Bulgaria, officially Republic of Bulgaria, is located in the eastern portion of the Balkan Peninsula in southeastern Europe. Founded in the 7th century, Bulgaria is one of the oldest states on the European continent and in the world. Today Bulgaria is part of the European Union. However, the country has the lowest GDP per capita among the various member countries. But can it be said that the poorest country in the European Union, which includes many of the richest countries in the world, is actually poor? In this video we will examine Bulgaria from a macroeconomic point of view, but first let's make a brief summary of its most recent historical events. And, please, consider supporting my activity by subscribing to my channel or becoming a Patreon. This would help me a lot to reconcile the new university path that awaits me with YouTube. Thank you very much. After almost five centuries of Ottoman rule, Bulgaria gained its independence only at the end of the 19th century, thus seeing its possibility of economic development limited for almost 500 years, especially during the first industrial revolution which unfortunately did not affect the whole Balkan region at all. From the end of Ottoman rule and especially after 1860s, the economy of Bulgaria as a whole was in a state of recovery, particularly felt in the 1920s. During the 1930s, the Bulgarian economy was described as an economy militarily bound to Germany. In the early 1940s, as Germany began to lose the Second World War, the Bulgarian economy suffered a decline. As a whole, the period between the 1880s and 1945 was marked by strong industrialization. After the Second World War Bulgaria found itself among the countries belonging to the socialist bloc. During the socialism era, Bulgarian economy continued to be industrialized, although free market trade substantially decreased, as private market initiatives became state-regulated. Still, the Bulgarian economy made significant overall progress in modernizing road infrastructure, airline transportation, as well as developing the tourism sector by building tourist resorts along the Black Sea coast and the mountain regions. During that time, Bulgaria followed the Soviet model of economic development more closely than any other member of the Eastern Bloc. These new policies resulted in impressive initial rates of economic development. Soviet-style centralized planning formed by consecutive five-year plan periods had more immediate benefits there compared to the other Eastern European states where it was first applied in the early 1950s. Throughout the post-war period, economic progress was also substantially assisted by a level of internal political stability unseen in other Eastern European countries during the same period. Nonetheless, beginning in the early 1960s, low capital and labor productivity, as well as expensive material inputs, plagued the Bulgarian economy. With disappointing rates of growth came a high degree of economic experimentation. In the late 1980s, continuing poor economic performance intensified economic hardship. Bulgaria's economy contracted dramatically after 1987, shortly before the dissolution of the URSS and the fall of the communist governments in Europe. Followed a difficult transition combined with political vagueness and unpreparedness of the Bulgarian people for social and economic changes which led to dramatically worsening economic conditions during the early 1990s. Over the past three decades Bulgaria has undergone a significant transformation. It has transformed from a highly centralized, planned economy to an open, market-based economy. In its initial transition, Bulgaria went through a decade of slow economic restructuring and severe economic crisis, high debt and loss of savings. The hardest moment of the transition was the crisis in the winter of 1996-1997. By the beginning of winter 1996, bread was running short through mishandling of wheat exports, oil was running short and there was huge protests against the government and inflation was out of control exceeding 1,000%, fortunately only for a beef period. This is followed by the introduction of a currency board, which is not typical for a developed country with serious historical and cultural traditions. However, the advancement of structural reforms starting in the late 1990s, the introduction of the currency board, and expectations of EU accession fortunately improved the situation, unleashing a decade of high economic growth and improved living standards. But the Bulgarian economy regained its pre-1989 levels only by June 2004. This period in the 90s has been called the lost decade.
economy increased at an average annual rate of more than 6% during the first decade of the new century driven by significant amounts of bank lending, consumption, and foreign direct investment. But after those consecutive years of high growth, repercussions of the financial crisis of 2008 resulted in a 3.6% contraction of GDP in 2009 and increased unemployment. Positive growth was restored in 2010 but the country was consequently affected by the debt crisis of the European Union in 2010, 2012 with low, if any, growth. As a consequence of the Eurozone crisis, the government implemented strict austerity measures with International Monetary Fund and EU encouragement to some positive fiscal results, but the social consequences of these measures, such as increased income inequality and accelerated outward migration, have been catastrophic, according to the International Trade Union Confederation. However, at the onset of the 2020 pandemic, economic conditions in Bulgaria were favorable. At 3.4%, gross domestic product growth in Bulgaria in 2019 was robust for the fifth year in a row, mainly driven by growing household consumption. This positive trend has been interrupted by the outbreak of the pandemic. According to preliminary data announced by the National Statistical Institute on 4 June, Bulgaria's economy grew by 0.3% in the first quarter of the year. This way Bulgaria is probably one of the very few European countries to show a GDP expansion in the first quarter of 2020. The country's public finances are relatively strong, with a debt-to-GDP ratio estimated at 19.2% in 2019, making Bulgaria the second EU country with the lowest public debt after Estonia and in line with Luxembourg. This was possible thanks to the strong economic performance in the early 2000s which made it possible to reduce the public debt from 79.6% in 1998 to an all-time low of 14.1% in 2010. Since 2012 there has been a slight increase but nonetheless remaining at low and acceptable levels. On September 17, for the first time since 2016, Bulgaria has placed two issues of government bonds on international markets to the tune of 2.5 billion euros. The issue was announced by the Minister of Finance in two tranches, a 10- and 30-year securities. According to the Minister of Finance, the manner in which this procedure for taking new external debt was carried out, the achieved profitability, the favorable conditions for the country and the number of investors interested in the country's securities, gives grounds to announce that this procedure has been a success in the country's recent economic history. However, it is still debt that will have to be repaid and it must be seen whether it will be allocated in the best possible way to stimulate economic growth. The general government budget in 2019 recorded a surplus of 1.1% of GDP and is expected to remain positive although public spending, pushed by a rise in public sector wages, is growing faster than revenues. Annual inflation remained stable in 2019 at 2.5%, though it was characterized by fluctuations during the year, and due to the outbreak of the pandemic and a further decline in oil prices is set to decrease to 1% and 1.9% in 2020 and 2021 respectively, marking a period very close to deflation completely opposite to that of the 1990s. Unemployment rate was estimated at 4.2% in 2019, down from 5.2% the previous year according to the International Monetary Fund data, remaining below the EU average. Bulgaria is in a state of demographic crisis. It has had negative population growth since the early 1990s, when the economic collapse caused a long-lasting emigration wave. Some 1,800,000 to 2 million people, mostly young adults left the country by 2011. Large-scale emigration of mainly active people led to a decline of the labor force in Bulgaria and has the potential for significant effects on the future economic and social development of the country. Migration affects individual sectors of the Bulgarian economy differently, imbalances are noticeable in the health sector, in university education and selected high-tech sectors. Outmigration of health professionals, especially of nurses, is a key challenge for the country. To overcome the negative effects of migration, there is a need to achieve further significant economic progress and higher living standards of people in Bulgaria. For this purpose the development of a stable and predictable business environment, the establishment of an efficient judiciary and implementation of reforms in the public sectors of healthcare, education and social services are necessary. Wage growth witnessed in 2019 and the previous years should continue this year, although at a slower pace. Poverty is estimated to have declined from 8.5% in 2015 to 7.1% in 2018. Another problem is that a high share of people remains at risk of poverty or social exclusion representing major economic and social challenge. 
The social protection system, including the general minimum income which does not have a transparent adjusting mechanism, does not provide adequate levels of support. Nevertheless, income inequality in Bulgaria is the highest in the European Union, in part due to demographic inequalities. However, despite all this, in the latest edition of the Eurostat Regional Yearbook, among the top 10 regions of the European Union with the highest rate of people at risk of poverty, there is only one Bulgarian region and surprisingly the podium is occupied by Italy and Spain. One of the worst plagues afflicting the Bulgarian economy, and beyond, is undoubtedly corruption. Corruption in Bulgaria has been a central problem of the country since the late 1990s, and fighting it has been at the top of the government's agenda, at least on a declarative level. Despite that, Bulgaria has systematically demonstrated very high levels of perception of corruption. Government officials reportedly engage in embezzlement, influence trading, government procurement violations and bribery with impunity. Reports by Transparency International under the Corruption Perceptions Index indicate that Bulgaria is considered the most corrupt member state of the European Union, to which Bulgaria exceeded in 2007. In 2015, the European Commission found that Bulgaria had done almost nothing to stem the tide of corruption and organized crime. Other metrics such as the Global Corruption Barometer, the Freedom Barometer and the Rule of Law Index also show worrisome trends. Unfortunately, all the existing data as well as all the research work and surveys done recently, regarding this specific phenomenon in Bulgaria shows that the levels, forms and scale of corruption in Bulgaria far exceed the average of such cases within Europe and at the same time represent one of the most serious social problems affecting all possible spheres of society. A survey polled by Eurobarometer shows that 85% of businesses in Bulgaria saw corruption as widespread in the country. This result, in the 2019 poll, was four percentage points lower than in a similar poll by Eurobarometer done in 2017. The poll found that 51% of businesses in Bulgaria saw corruption as a problem, compared with an average in the European Union of 37%. Given a range of options regarding which form of corruption was most widespread in Bulgaria and able to choose up to three answers, 46% named funding of political parties in exchange for public contracts or influence over public policy, 39% said kickbacks and 27% said bribes. Asked if anyone in Bulgaria had asked or expected from the company to give a gift, favor or extra money in exchange for permits, such as building, land use or environmental permits, among others, or services, 12% of those polled said yes, a drop of 4 percentage points compared with the 2017 poll. Asked if, in the past three years, they believed that corruption had prevented their company from getting a public tender or procurement contract, 30% of the businesses polled in Bulgaria said yes and 63% said no. In the case of, yes, this was a drop of one percentage point, and in the case of, no, a gain of three percentage points compared with 2017. 48% did not agree that people and businesses in Bulgaria caught for petty corruption were appropriately punished, while 75% rejected the statement that people and businesses caught bribing a senior official were appropriately punished. 70% did not believe that people or businesses engaged in corruption in Bulgaria would face charges and go to court, the Eurobarometer poll found. Since the beginning of 2020, a series of corruption-related crises and scandals have created tensions in the public sphere and led to an explosive protest that has been continuing for three months so far. The protests voiced three main demands, the resignation of the ruling coalition and the chief prosecutor, early elections and then judicial reform through constitutional amendments. Returning to a more macroeconomic analysis, from the pie chart it can be seen that the primary sector represents a relatively small part of the total economy, a typical feature of developed economies because normally with the development of an economy, the increase in labor productivity will allow workers to leave the agricultural sector and move to other sectors, such as manufacturing and the service sector. In fact, agriculture accounts for less than one-tenth of the national income of Bulgaria, the country has only small deposits of oil and natural gas, though it is hoped that offshore exploration of the Black Sea will reap new deposits. So, Bulgaria relies in particular on Russia for supplies of natural gas. Bulgaria's first and only nuclear power station, at Kozlodai, was constructed with Soviet aid and began operation in 1974. Two reactors were closed there in 2002, and another two were shut down in 2006 as a condition of EU accession. Under the socialist system, industrialization became one of the principal aims of economic policy, with particular emphasis on heavy industries such as electric power, ferrous and non-ferrous metallurgy, and chemicals. Central planning of management, production, and investment channeled a large portion of national resources into industry. 
the industrial base remained important even after Bulgaria discarded socialism for a market economy at the end of the 20th century. Within the services sector, tourism is a significant contributor to economic growth. Bulgaria also has a rapidly developing IT sector. Since joining the European Union, Bulgaria has experienced a considerable growth in trade. The country is very open to foreign trade, which represented 131% of GDP in 2018 according to World Bank. Bulgaria mainly exports petroleum oils, refined and unrefined copper, medicaments and wheat, while imports are led by petroleum oils, copper ores, medicaments, motor cars and petroleum gases. The Soviet Union, until its dissolution in the early 1990s, was Bulgaria's main trading partner. In the early 21st century Bulgaria's primary export destinations included the other countries of the European Union, as well as Turkey. Russia was a major source of imports, along with EU countries, Turkey, and China. Economics Channel It's time to give some numbers to the Bulgarian economy using our economy strength score. Let's start with the GDP. The Bulgarian GDP is decidedly modest. Its development was heavily influenced throughout the 1990s. Nominal GDP, which is what we use for calculating the final score, is 72nd out of 185 countries evaluated, positioning itself between Ghana and Myanmar. For this it has a score of 9.1 out of 15. Like GDP, GDP pro capita is also modest, ranking, however, slightly better, at 68th place. This is due to the fact that Bulgaria has a small population. The score attributed to it is 3.1 out of 5. As far as public debt is concerned, the situation is much better. In fact, as we have seen, Bulgaria in the European Union has one of the lowest levels of public debt and, therefore, gets a score of 2.38 out of a maximum of 2.5. Slightly worse is the unemployment situation which, however, presents acceptable levels and score 1.64 out of 2.5. GDP growth in 2019 and the years immediately preceding it was robust, but according to various Bulgarian and non-Bulgarian economists, it was below its potential and therefore scores 1.87 out of 2.5. Bulgarian inflation, taking into consideration the one just before the pandemic, presents optimal levels, perhaps slightly low but still excellent, so it gets the maximum score of 2 out of 2. And now, the last factor. The trade balance of Bulgaria, including services, shows a good trade surplus also demonstrating the strong commercial openness of the country, obtaining a score of 0.41 out of a maximum of 0.5. In the end, Bulgaria reaches an overall score of 20.5 out of 30, ranking 47th out of 185 countries, proving to have a medium economic strength, with strengths in the sphere of public finances but also with weaknesses indirectly stemming from social problems, such as corruption, which have influenced and still affect the growth of the economy. And here is a provisional ranking of the countries analyzed so far. Bulgaria is certainly a country with a fantastic and millenary history but which has had really difficult moments. Today, unfortunately, we often hear about Bulgaria only as a poor country, constantly hearing epithets such as, the poorest country in the European Union. But leaving the realm of the European Union and taking a global vision, Bulgaria or its economy certainly cannot be defined as poor. Of course, as a whole it presents very big problems such as corruption, the demographic problem, freedom of the press and which represent really big challenges for the future, but we must also take into account all the positive factors we have talked about, such as fiscal stability and the good economic performances since the 2000s which have made it possible to reduce poverty, even if it remains widespread in certain categories of the population. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.